Hi, Sherman Rowland with Highland Park, and I'm going to show you how to set up your wet grinder. Your wet grinder comes with a nice little box here, and inside it, you're going to find um, your pads, which we've taken out already. You're going to find in this box a little, um, this is your uh, wheel with the uh, hook and um, basically Velcro, but it's actually, Velcro is a trademark name. It's a hook and loop um, material. Um, and uh, setting this up, what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull our wet grinder out. And you'll notice that this has this little rubber cover on it. Um, and what you're going to do is to take your handles and everything out, and you'll get to your parts thing. So a couple things you'll find in, in your kit. You'll find a handle. You'll find a, uh, a uh, hose. You'll find the rubber little spray guard dinghy. You'll find the hook and loop uh, piece. You'll note also in the bag here, there's an extra set of brushes. And I have a different video up there that shows you how to replace the brushes on your wet grinder. Um, and, and of course, the pads come with it as well. And last but not least, you'll have a valve. This is the valve that goes in the top of the unit. And this little O-ring holds that little spray guard on. So to get started, what I do first, and the directions in here tell you a sequence on how to to do the setup, which is probably, if you're an instruction following person, probably not bad to do. I don't tend to follow instructions um, as much. But, um, but, but basically, to start with is you're going to take these two set screws out. I mean, not set screws, these uh, um, Allen wrench uh, bolts out called a socket cap screw. And we're going to remove those. And then we're going to get our handle. The handle's going to go in just like this. And what you want to do is you want to be super careful when you thread this back in, not to cross thread, because I've had customers do that. So I always like to thread it in by hand. Um, similar here, you want to line it up and uh, start it by hand so you know that it's going in. And then I'll use my Allen wrench here to tighten it up. Not super tight, because you want to be able to move that handle. So I'm not going to crank it down so I'm crushing it, but just tight enough. Now, you'll note inside here, inside here there's an O-ring. You can see there's that little black O-ring in there. So the valve that goes on here basically screws down. Uh, and I want to note something a little bit here. Real important, when you put this together, don't over tighten this or that o-ring is just going to get squished and then it'll get sucked down in there and your water sprayer won't work and i've had probably four or five guys return their wet grinder saying that well they're not spraying and what they did is they just tighten this up way too tight they squished that o-ring flat and it got sucked down in to the top of the pump um, so what you want to do is you want to tighten this up to where you'll feel that it's starting to compress and i can feel compression on it right there and then I'm going to take this nut here, this little jam nut, tighten it up. Now what I prefer to do, and I'm not going to do that on this particular one, but what I prefer to do is to take a little bit of Ultra Black, uh, a little bit of the Permatex Ultra Black, which is kind of my favorite all around. We love this stuff. And what I do is I put a bead of that around here, but not getting inside. Basically what I do is, and I'm not going to do it because I'm going to put this back together to ship. But I put a bead of this ultra black going around here. So I got a bead, not in the tip, so to get down here, but right on the outside. Then leaving that O-ring in place with that ultra black on there. You can kind of pretend I've got it on there. I'm going to tighten that up. And bead, I'm talking like maybe an eighth of an inch at most, not much. Then I'll tighten this bolt down there. It'll squish into that ultra black. You'll get some on your fingers, which is, you know, you can clean off. Um, and then I'm going to tighten this up here. Now, sometimes I'll find that this, this here, this little nut on the top is not that tight. So I'm going to loosen this, back that off a little bit. Because I got compression on that O-ring. I don't want to over compress, just enough that I got compression on that O-ring so it won't leak. If I do find leaking after I put it together, then I would tighten this a little bit more. Then my next step is I'm going to take my hose. Again, I won't take this all apart, but basically, I'm going to take this little brown part, slip it over here, and then we'll push this hose onto the end. 
So I just kind of push that on there. And then I'm going to tighten this up. Tightening up this O-ring here, I mean this little hose. Um, and of course, I would unravel the whole thing, but I'm going to put this back in the box after we're done with this video, so that's why I'm not taking it all apart. Now you also pay attention to make sure you got this little rubber gasket in here. Don't lose that little rubber gasket, otherwise when you hook this up to your garden hose, you're going to water all over. So that little gasket allows you to seal this up nice to your hose so that you don't get leaking on the hose. So now what we need to do, and I would not necessarily suggest it, but um, in that order, um, I'm going to put this spray guard on. Now note the spray guard here faces this way. You want the spray to go away from your body because you're over here holding it. So to do that, I'm going to put my little o my little o-ring, I mean, sorry, my uh, hose clamp right there, slip it down around here. And I'm going to get myself a screwdriver. It's a Phillips screwdriver. And uh, so we're going to just tighten this up here. Amber's over there cutting something cool. So, what'd you get? Is it cool? Ah, gotta love that Laguna. Um, all right, so now we've got our little spray guard on. And then, last but not least, you take this little thing, spin it on. And then, I'm gonna grab a pad here, and I'll show you how a pad adheres. So, you'll note on the back of these pads, it's just the fuzzy part. This would be the, the hoop part of the hook and loop, I'm sorry, the loop, which basically is Velcro. So that just sticks right on there. And that's all you need to do. And to take it off, pull it off. So you can change your grit real easy. Did you get that? So you can change your grit real easy by just popping this on. Um, and when you run this, we'll do a little separate video for all in terms of running this. When you run the wet grinder, two things you want to do you want to make sure that you do basic smart things. One smart thing is when you plug it into the outlet, make sure that you're plugging into a grounded outlet um, because that's going to allow the uh, GFCI circuit to trip if there is an uh, over a load and it senses that you've actually becoming uh, at risk of getting shocked. The other thing is use common sense. Always wear safety glasses or goggles. So when you're running a wet grinder, you want to run goggles. Two, wear rubber gloves. And three, wear boots. Now I see people out there with flip-flops. There are no protection. And these will sometimes, when you use them, if you've got a lot of water blown all over, you'll get a little bit of misting. And you can get a really low-level tingle, which is basically telling you that you got way too much water spraying everywhere. Um, and you're not adequately insulating yourself from risk of shock because there's only so much you can do on any kind of wet grinder. So part of this is required for you to really use some good common judgment of rubber gloves, rubber boots, and don't put so much water flushing through that everything's wet. All you need is enough water coming through to keep the pads cool so you don't melt them and to keep your material cool. If I'm, if I'm grinding on Arizona wood or polishing, I do have risk of causing uh, um, fracturing by basically overheating it when I'm using my wet grinder. So you want to flush with enough water to be able to manage temperature. Um, and one of the basic rules or thumbs when you're rolling, running this is make sure that you don't overheat the gearbox so much. If you cannot put your fingers on the gearbox comfortably, it's time to stop, let it cool down. That's a real important thing because the gearbox is generally the one thing that tends to wear out on these or get damaged. And we do have replacements in stock that we can sell you, but pay attention to it not getting out hot. The other thing is if the unit starts losing a lot of uh, energy, and this happens after quite a bit of time of use, you probably need to replace the brushes. And you can see the other video I've shot about how to replace the brushes. Super easy to put these in. You just have to take some screws apart um, to do that. So that's the basic, you know, how to get it open. I would tell you one thing that this other wrench does. This wrench is used for taking the wheel off. So say if this wheel gets real tight, 
um, I can put this underneath here and I can unscrew. So sometimes this will get really tight on and you're like, uh -uh. just put that wrench on there, grab it with your hands, turn it, and you can undo it. And then you can put any 5 8 11 uh, adapter tool on there, like a turbo wheel and things like that. What do you got? Let's see. Actually see. Ooh, sure. check that out. That's a little baby. Wow. And look at that. It's got shadow in there. You see that? Nice. That is a nice piece there. Okay, so that should give you guys enough uh, idea on the wet grinder. Uh, you, by the way, you can use a wet grinder for polishing that kind of stuff. You've got slabs and that. Um, we sell a lot of these particular pieces. Um, I love this particular design. We did some improvements to it. Um, one, we did a nylon body. Um, a lot of the ones just do kind of a cheap plastic body. We shifted this to a nylon to make it much more high impact. We use a over the box coolant as opposed to under the bottom. You know, some people you'll see they'll sell the ones that has the line come on the bottom. It's a little bit less to manage, but the gearbox wipes out a lot faster. So we prefer to have the water going through the gearbox because it actually keeps it cooler. Um, we move to a, a die cast aluminum box, not plastic. You'll see other grinders, they'll put like a nylon box. It's still painted silver, but it's nylon. This is true die cast aluminum and we keep the parts on the shelf. Um, we're the only manufacturer that actually has spare parts, period. I've got replacement switches. You'll see on the back here, there's your variable speed control for speeding the unit up or slowing it down. I have also replacements. I've never sold one yet, but I've got replacements of those, replacement switches, replacement brushes, replacement gearboxes, replace bearings. So we really, you know, when we bring out a machine like this, this is this is intended to really last you some time and it's serviceable. It only comes with a 90 day warranty because these do take a lot of abuse and people do stupid things to them. But, um, you know, we've got basically all the parts in stock. Definitely run it with a little rubber thing. We actually came up with this um, because this reduces the amount of risk of water getting inside the unit, getting pulled back in because underneath here are vents. And so that reduces a little bit of your risk on it in terms of use. But that's all the basics of how to assemble a wet grinder. Hey, f thanks for watching today. If you like what you see, click the like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to get more videos like this. And down below in the description, you'll find a link that goes to our website. It goes to also what we showed you today, more information about that. And leave comments. If there's things that you like, if there's things that you want us to do more on, if there's videos that you want us to shoot that we haven't shot, we're very open to that. We're really looking for ways to help you be successful in your endeavors with the tools and technologies that we create, as well as any other aspect of the hobby.